Hello and welcome to the video. Matthew here and we're going to look at question two, which is a 30 mark question on complex numbers. So part A of the question is worth 10 marks and we're given two complex numbers, Z1 and Z2, plotted on an Argand diagram for the complex plane. So remember, on an Argand diagram, the y-axis is now the imaginary axis and the x-axis is now the real axis. So I'm going to mark in numbers here on our diagram just to help us. And I recommend you to do this too, as it'll make the question that bit easier. So now in the question, we have three parts, and we have to plot the following points and ensure that they're clearly labeled. So we have Z3, where Z3 is equal to I times Z2, Z4, where Z4 is equal to minus Z3, and then Z5, where Z5 is equal to the conjugate of Z4. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write out the coordinates of Z1 and Z2. So Z1 is gonna be equal to minus four plus zero. So Z1 is gonna be equal to minus four plus I times by zero, or just minus four. And Z2 will be equal to minus two minus four I. So now let's find Z3 by multiplying I by minus two minus four I, which will give me minus two I plus four I squared. But remember that I squared is equal to minus one. So that's really four by minus one. So that's gonna give us minus four minus two iota. And that's our coordinate for Z3. So now marking that into our diagram, that's gonna be right here. And now we have to find Z4, which is part two. So that's minus times by minus four minus two iota, which will give me four plus two iota. So now let's mark that in on our diagram. So four plus two iota is right here, and that's Z4. And now we just have to find Z5. So Z5 is equal to the conjugate of Z4. So remember, if we have a complex number Z, and Z is equal to A plus B iota, the complex conjugate of Z is gonna be equal to A minus B iota. So basically, you just change the imaginary part from either positive to negative or negative to positive. So the conjugate of Z4 is four plus two iota. So therefore, the conjugate of Z4 will be four minus two iota, and that's our Z5. So now let's mark that in on our diagram, and that's our final point. So four minus two iota is right here, and that is Z5. So that's our answer for part A. And now we're gonna look at part B, and B part one is worth five marks. So this says, use De Moivre's theorem to express cos theta plus I sine theta cubed in the form cos k theta plus I sine k theta, where k is a real number. So let's have a look on page 20 of our formula and tables book for this theorem. And it's this theorem right here, so it's the third one down on the page, which basically says that if you have a complex number in the polar form, as you do there, so that's cos theta plus I sine theta, when it's to the power of n, that's equal to cos n times by theta plus i sine n times theta. So in our case, n is equal to three. That's gonna be cos three theta plus i sine three theta. And that's our answer for b part one. Now let's have a look at b part two, which is also worth five marks. So now this wants us to use the binomial theorem to expand cos theta plus i sine theta cubed. You can use a different method, but I think we should stick with the way that is being recommended. So the binomial theorem is also on page 20 and it's the last formula on the page. So it's this formula right here. Looks slightly more confusing, but it isn't really. So now let's use this now to figure out cos theta plus I sine theta cubed using that theorem. So we start off with N choose zero. So in our case, N is three, so it's three choose zero. And then it's going to be X, which in our case here, our X is gonna be cos theta. So it's gonna be cos theta to the power of three. And then our Y is sine theta. And then our Y is I sine theta. So it's times by I sine theta to the power of zero. And then added to that, it's gonna be N choose one. So three choose one. And now our x and y are the same, so cos theta, i sine theta, but the powers will be different, so it's gonna be cos theta squared, and then i sine theta to the power of one. And this pattern will repeat. Our final step will be at three choose three. And now we're going to evaluate this. So to find out what three choose zero is, we can use your calculator. So it's three and then shift, and then the division button, and then zero. So in our case, it's one. So one times, and then cos theta cubed is gonna be cos cubed theta and then i sine theta to the power of zero will just be one, as any number to the power of zero is always one. And now we're going to do three choose one, and this is equal to three. So three times by cos squared theta times by i sine theta. And now we're going to do three choose two, which is three again. So three times by cos theta times by i squared sine squared theta. And then finally, three choose three, and that is one. And then cos theta to the power of zero will be one as well. And then i cubed sine cubed theta. So now we can expand this out a bit. So one by cos cubed theta by one is just gonna be cos cubed theta. And then three times by cos squared theta by i sine theta will just be i times by three cos squared theta sine theta. Now remember, i squared is equal to minus one. So this will be equal to minus one here, which just basically makes that term a minus. So it's gonna be minus three times by cos theta sine squared theta. 
and then finally one by one and then again i squared will be minus one but there's still another i left in there so it's minus i times by sine cubed theta and there we have it we've expanded cos theta plus i sine theta cubed using the binomial theorem so now we're going to move on to the final part of the question which is b part three and this is worth 10 marks so now we have to prove that cos 3 theta is equal to 4 cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta. So basically our answers from b part 1 and b part 2 should be equal to each other. So let's write that down. Now in the bit that we have to prove, we have cos 3 theta. And the cos 3 theta here on the left hand side is a real value as it hasn't got an i. So it's not multiplied by i. So what we have to do now is equate all the real parts. So it's going to be cos 3 theta. And then on the right hand side, we're going to have to underline all the real parts as well. So in other words, all the terms without an i. So that's going to be cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta sine squared theta. And then we're going to put both of those equal to cos 3 theta. So now remember that cos squared a plus sine squared a is equal to 1. And we can rearrange this to be sine squared a is equal to 1 minus cos squared a. So that means that we're going to sub in 1 minus cos squared a for sine squared a in our answer. We don't have a, we have theta, but it's the same thing. So that gives us cos 3 theta is equal to cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta times by 1 minus cos squared theta. And multiplying out the minus 3 cos theta by 1 minus cos squared theta, we get cos 3 theta is equal to cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta plus 3 cos cubed theta. And we have cos cubed theta plus 3 cos cubed theta. Both of those are like terms, which means we can add those together, which gives us cos 3 theta is equal to 4 cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta. And Therefore, we've proven that cos 3 theta is equal to 4 cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta. And that's our answer for B part 3, the final part of the question, and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope I helped.